So this catalyzing change in high school math book really challenges educators to think differently about the purposes of, of high school mathematics. Um, to think about some of our structures that we have that really might impede the equity um, that, that, it, that could exist in high school mathematics, and to analyze some of the current instructional practices through that lens of equity, thinking about what, what would be essential for students to learn um, in mathematics um, in high school. data. Um, and most of us are pretty familiar with our mathematics SOL pass rate. So this one is actually the, the latest that we have from spring 2019. Um, and you can see all students for um, in Virginia for the Virginia um, standards of learning assessments, the average was an 82% pass rate. And then the bars below that show um, that broken down by different student groups so that you can see um, where there might be some, some gaps in, in our student achievement. So again, thinking about even those students that are taking calculus in high school, how many of them are having to retake courses anyhow? So, so what's, what's the rush to, for us to point everybody towards this race to calculus? We also hear about how high school math content is a mile wide and an inch deep and it lacks focus and it lacks um, depth. And then we also hear a lot about the inequities in math education um, that exist for a multitude of different reasons. really needs to prepare students a little bit better for success after high school, regardless of their intended career directions. Um, the, the VMPI uh, supports a curriculum that's rich and it's not rushed. Uh, through the development of mathematics curriculum that drastically reduces the need for acceleration and supports students being in more heterogeneous classrooms where we can begin to address some of the inequities that currently exist. Our students are, are going to be in a world where, where there's, there's all different levels of ability. They're going to work with these people. They're going to live in their, those communities. And we want to make sure that our, our students are in classrooms where they're learning with, with, with those students as well. And let me be totally clear, we are talking about taking Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, those three courses that we've known and loved for 150 years, and removing them from our high school mathematics program, replacing them with essential concepts for grade 8, 9, and 10. And in those, in those essential concepts, we're going to try to frame everything through the lens of mathematical modeling. How can we take a real-world problem and develop our mathematical ideas and mathematical concepts by trying to solve that real world problem. And in the process of solving that real world problem, we're going to learn about data analysis. We are going to learn about functions and algebra. So don't get the wrong idea. We're not getting rid of some of those key algebraic ideas. Some of those algebraic ideas are very much essential and they're still in these courses. ahead and um, get your feedback uh, about um, your beliefs about access and equity in mathematics. Um, Brian has um, 
launch adults. adults. Um, so you you should be able to see that that uh, the the most most of you disagreed with that that educators in in your division believe the practice of isolating low achieving students um, should be eliminated. Um, so we're kind of across the board um, in a lot of places. And so we, we really do need to have a lot of critical conversations about, about this and, and what, what is it that should be happening? What, what, what is it that, that we should be thinking about to, to address some of the inequities?